Hello everyone, Berserkit here, and welcome to my series called Rome 2 Mod Spotlight, in which I spotlight various mods for Rome 2 from the Steam Workshop. In today's episode, I'm gonna be spotlighting the Champ Plus Gold Unit compilation. So first of all, let's see what the mod actually is. If you go to the second episode of this series that I did, you would see that I spotlighted a mod called Zamu's Unit Compilation. Well, Zamu, who now goes by the name of Champ Plu, has been making a lot of unit compilations. Most of them have been based on, you know, certain regions of the map. For example, the Barbarian Storm unit pack has been focusing on the Barbarian factions, the invasion of the Nomads has been focusing on the Nomad factions, and so on and so forth. However, recently, Jamplu decided to put kind of a final mod compilation, which is exactly what this mod is. It's all of his best units combined into one. And I personally think that this is the best unit compilation that's ever been out for Rome 2, and I'm gonna tell you exactly why that is. But first of all, a few minor things that you should know about this mod. First of all, the compatibility. It is compatible with pretty much any mainstream mod you can think of. The 4 turns per year, the better textures for Blood and Gore, the camera mod, all of this stuff plus all of his previous mods, as well as some other unit compilations, which makes it very interesting. So you can add this unit pack, and if you want something very specific, you can also add different unit packs so that you'll have a more customizable gaming experience. There are probably a few other minor details that are probably worth mentioning, but I'm not gonna mention them in this video. If you wanna go and check out the mod on the Steam Workshop, the link is in the description, and you can see every single detail you should know about it. But in this video, I just want to talk about the units and why I think the mod is so good. You know, the reasons this unit compilation is different from your random unit compilation out there. So first of all, the amount of units that it adds. It adds a total number of 235 units in the game. I have never heard of a mod that adds that many units. And the thing is, it adds units for every single playable faction in the game. And another good thing is that it adds land units as well as naval units. But in some of these videos, I always say I would never use a unit compilation for a campaign game. However, this one changed my mind. I have never played a campaign using a unit compilation. But there is a specific reason why I had never done that. Most unit compilations out there are very specific. They concentrate on a certain thing. Once again, his previous unit compilations, I have tried out some of them, but I've never played a campaign with them because they concentrate, once again, either on, on the nomadic tribes or the barbarian tribes or so on. So, if you play as one of these factions, you're gonna have a pretty good edge over the other factions when it comes to you know, unit quality and when it comes to unit variety. And another reason why I haven't used a unit compilation before is that some of them completely overhaul the units to the point where you don't have any of the old vanilla units in the game, meaning that you'll have to learn, you know, every single unit and they're usually, you know, they, they might add a lot of units. So you'll have to just remember the stats and the purpose of every single unit there is. This mod doesn't suffer from any of these issues, it just hits the middle ground, the sweet spot between these two extremes. So it doesn't completely overhaul the units, but it still adds a reasonable amount of units for every single faction there is, which I very much appreciate. So this way you're gonna have some really good quality new elite units, but you'll also have the core units from the vanilla. And another good thing about this mod is that the balance is very good. You know, some of the mods out there that exist just they're made with a very purpose of unbalancing the game. For example, these hero unit packs. There is just one guy that can slaughter just a hundred, you know, hundreds of troops. For me, that is unrealistic and really unbalanced. Not all of these units are unique, they're not just gonna crush everything, you know, they're all sorts of units and they're very well balanced, their price is definitely right and there has been a lot of testing to just make sure that these units are perfectly balanced. And when it comes to the visuals, the mod is just equally impressive. First of all, if you take a look at the unit cards, you can never tell that these units are not in the game in the first place. There has been so much attention put into the detail of all of these unit cards. I mean, when I started the mod and I went to the custom battle screen, I couldn't tell which units are in the game by default and which are added by the mod. And they look very impressive on the battlefield as well, with the difference that you can actually tell which are the units added by the mod on the battlefield. And I don't mean this in a negative way, as I usually do. 
what I'm trying to say is that these units look different. There is more detail put into them. You know, there is more variety if you look at like every single soldier individually. Some of them look pretty interesting, but I haven't noticed like any bugs. Like for example, in Gods of the Arena, there was this bug where troops weren't using their weapons really the way they should be used. And there were some weapon models just clipping through the actual unit. In this mod, I haven't spotted any of that. And there was just one last thing that I want to mention that is really important to me. You know, every time when I make one of my Shuji Byte series, I always go through the factions through their unit rosters and I say, you know, I think they like that unit and that unit. Well, apparently me and Champloo think in a very similar way because he's added a lot of these units that I really wanted to see in the game. So let's get a recent example. In my last Shuji Byte, I reviewed the Pirates and Raiders factions, and one of the factions is the Adrisian Kingdom. So what did I say about the Adrisian Kingdom? I said they lacked a lot of infantry, you know, in both the melee infantry department and spear infantry department, one more archer or belt test unit, one more horse archer unit, and some variety in the shock and melee cavalry departments. Well, let's see what he added to the Adrisian Kingdom. He added two swordsman units that were really liking they didn't have a single swordsman unit he added two spear infantry units one of them is lower quality if you want to go for numbers and one is very elite and expensive unit he added one more archer unit which the faction was lacking they had some archers they were pretty low quality whereas these guys were pretty expensive and they can do a lot of damage he added two shock cavalry units two melee cavalry units and one skirmish cavalry unit which I think proves my point. And that is not the only case where this happens. He fills a lot of these gaps. He adds a lot of these units that should have been in the game in the first place. And yeah, that's gonna be it for this mod spotlight. And remember, if you like the mod, you can find the link in the description and you can actually upvote it. And the more upvotes he receives, he's gonna add a few more units to the game that, are, that look pretty good. So make sure to do that. And yeah, that's everything. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.